So welcome back. So continuing our module 6 on biorefinery, we will now focus on the biochemicals. In the previous lecture, we focused on biofuels. So biofuels, we saw how they are made by primarily through transesterification. And we also saw other than transesterification, you can also use deoxygenation, the hydrodeoxygenation process by UOP. So today, we will see the biochemicals. So what are the bio-based chemicals in this lecture? So basically like oil refinery, we also have platform chemicals. So platform chemicals are something like from where you have to make other chemicals. So these are base chemicals like we have studied earlier. So these platform chemicals are also limited in number 12 or so which has been uh, given an approval or they have been told that they are the formidable building blocks by the Department of Energy of USA. So there are 12 platform chemicals. So we will take some of this in today's lecture. So we will see one is ethanol is one of them, then glycerol is one of them, then succinic acid and then finally HMF. So we will consider HMF in the, this is a process where uh, we will see the HMF chemical with the conventional scheme and with the improved scheme with the Avantium process. We will see both of them together. So what are platform chemicals? So analogous to petrochemical business, relatively small number, about 20 of so called base chemicals generated are from oil components, okay. So like uh, you have in oil refinery, you have those 20 base chemicals, you know benzene, toluene, xylene, all these are some of the base chemicals or the, the upper, the one upper chemicals, the top product like C2 and C3, these are all base chemicals because on these chemicals you process further to let us say you are having C2 and C3, you produce polyethylene or polypropylene. So like that, these are also in bio-based chemical industry, we have a small number of platform molecules which are can be derived from biomass components. But they will differ significantly from oil-based chemicals. Why? Because the biomass components have different composition. It may have more oxygen as compared to refinery because in the refinery you have sulfur and nitrogen, they are in oxygen, they are mostly removed in processes such as hydroprocessing reaction where they are hydrogenated or you break them into smaller chains or you make them in alkylation, you make them branching, all these processes actually not much oxygen is involved but in biomass components you have a lot of oxygen. So the components will differ. So multiple such molecules of this type have been identified. So the compounds possessing has, I mean all the compounds has possess here functional groups and its ability to be converted into a variety of economically significant value added chemicals already underway. Okay. It is possible that the chemicals derived from these platform molecules will be the same. So whatever you derive from the platform chemical, it may be the similar to that of oil refined. Let us say ethanol, you get derive ethanol as one of the platform chemical or biomass and uh, ethanol from biomass we call this bioethanol and ethanol from petroleum you call this no, ethanol as such. So ethanol uh, we, that is what say it may be same in composition. So what are the platform chemicals we should understand? So if I want to write it down the platform chemicals, so uh, you already know some of them. Let us say for one first is ethanol, you know this ethanol. Then uh, it can be glycerol, these are the all platform chemicals, okay. So you should, so you have OH both side and a central OH, this is glycerol. Then you can also have a xylitol, this is a xylitol is a very important compound. So it will have the compounds such as you have, I have already given you earlier, you have a OH here and a OH here, then you have, this OH is actually I am writing is in a three, two ray dimension. So it is behind or ahead of the plane, okay. So that I am not able to focus it right now on the screen. So you can refer to the literature, so this is called xylitol. So this I need not write ethanol, glycerol, xylitol, then there is this sorbitol, sorbitol is another compound which is already found in humans. So again this is uh, beyond the plane, this OH is beyond the plane, then you have just a, this is OH, then you have a OH here, then uh, you have a OH here, okay. So this is called sorbitol. Okay, this is sorbitol or you may have lactic acid, this is one of the compound which is widely used for making the biodegradable polymer polylactic acid and this polylactic acid nowadays is a replacement for most of the cutleries what you see in the market. So this is 
lactic acid, this is a monomer for polylactic acid. Then you have hydroxypropanoic acid, hydroxypropanoic acid with the formula like this. So, this is lactic acid, then you have this hydroxy, hydroxypropanoic acid, propanoic acid, okay. These are all called platform chemicals. Then an the important is called LA short form, this is called levulinic acid. This is an important precursor for the production of several polymers or so, this is the structure you should know for levulonic acid, it has a double bond. This is a levulonic acid, levulonic acid is important precursor for number of intermediates, plastics, plasticizers, okay, short form it is also called as levulonic acid. Then you have succinic acid is one of the most important precursor. We will see this succinic acid later. It has a double bond with the O. Succinic acid. Okay. Then you have furfural. So, furfural you know what is the uses, they are also used in petrochemical industries, petroleum industries downstream for extraction as aromatic extractant, okay. furfural, these are compounds which are very useful or HMF, now I was talking about this HMF is a very important compound. So, HMF is something like this, you have a 5 membered ring at the core, the 5 membered ring then you have a double bond O like this and you have OH group like this. This is called HMF or hydroxymethyl furfural. Now, this short form is also called HMF. So, this HMF problem is, we will see this later, is when you make them, they are not stable in the acidic media. So, as I told you in the last part of the lecture, I will be discussing what are the improvement in the process. So, they have made uh, some other technique so that it becomes stable or it does not produce HMF or some derivative of HMF. So, research has been oriented towards their director to provide or produce derivative of HMF which are stable. Then this is another important called is FDCA that is furan dicarboxylic acid. So, uh, the compound is similar to HMF, the core is quite similar, this is the core, so uh, this is called furan dicarboxylic acid, furan dicarboxylic dicarboxylic acid. In short form, this is also called as FDCA, FDCA. Now, this is if you see both of this HMF and FDCA similar in structure, but with FDCA you have a double bond at the sides. This double bond at the extremes helps in the polymerization reaction. So, this is one of the monomer for a polymer called as PEF. So, that PEF is similar to PET, the PET bottles what you have in cold rings. So, polyethylene terephthalate, similar compound, but this compound is derived from biomass. So, we will take up this at the later part of the lecture. Then you have the natural rubber where it is found, it is isoprene, it is another compound which is, which is called isoprene. So, what we will focus in our current lecture is some of the compounds we will touch upon the this levulinic acid, succinic acid, then this FDCA and HMF and ethanol. So, these uh, compounds we will focus on ethanol, levulinic acid, succinic acid, HMF and FDCA. Then we will see how the research is oriented towards direction and if there is anything commercially available. So, the let us suppose we take the first platform chemical is ethanol. You know we have already studied ethanol in the last lecture also, it is a feedstock for the production of bulk chemicals. Usually you have a, what you can do with ethanol, you can convert ethanol to syngas by a metal based catalyst, 
and it can serve as a renewable source of energy. Syn gas, as you know, is formed from the gasification of either natural gas or coal, but that is not renewable, that is fossil fuel based, but it may serve as a source for renewable source of energy because the ethanol you are deriving from biomass, so it is a renewable source. So what are the other chemicals you can form from the ethanol, we can see. So you can form from ethanol, you can get, okay. So either you do addition of water, if you do addition of water, you can form ethene, ethene molecule, you can form ethene from this ethanol. You have studied this in the previous modules also, just I want to touch it down. Or you want to do both a dehydration as well as dehydrogenation reaction. You lose the water as well as the hydrogen molecule and you form butadiene. So butadiene you know, which is a very useful compound for polymers, butadiene. Or you can uh, with air, if it is added with a limit uh, with air, it may form acetic acid. We have seen this in one of the module, acetic acid and this acetic acid, if it is reacted with further with another ethanol molecule in the and if you confirm with a dehydration experiment, you can form ethyl acetate, which is an ester, you know ethyl acetate. So, okay. So, there are multiple opportunities from ethanol. So, this is the ethanol molecule and these are the products that are formed. Or you can do a simple dehydrogenation reaction, remove hydrogen to form acetaldehyde. Now, this acetaldehyde is also useful, CHGCHO or you can also do steam reforming. This steam reforming as I told you, it is done in the presence of metal based catalyst. You convert it to syngas, so you convert into CO2, H2. So, from C, so this has wide application for as a power source, as a polymer source, monomer source. So, these are ethyl acetate, then this is acetic acid, AA, I am writing it in short, or acetaldehyde. So this is where the uses of ethanol can be, this is so it is called as a platform chemical. One of the another use what they do is the dehydration of ethanol, we, if we look this dehydration of ethanol in details, what we get is essentially you can have the reaction which is simply you just take out one water molecule. So this is a highly endothermic reaction, so this works out in this manner CH3CH2OH how do you produce alkene? You have this CH2, so delta H is close to around, this delta H is close to around 45.3 kilojoule per mole, so it is an endothermic reaction. So this particular reaction because this ethanol is a source from biomass is very popular in Brazil and USA, so they will convert the ethanol to ethene. This is just I discussed in the previous slide or there is another process uh, which actually convert them to ether and then the ether then decomposes and forms ethanol, so that is sorry to form ethene. So that is another way, this is first part, this is one of the process, the B part you can also have, uh, let us say you have these two moles of ethanol, it will react and form CH3, CH2, diethyl ether. So you have this diethyl, sorry, this is CH2, CH3, okay. So this is a bonded structure and uh, we have a H2O molecule. So delta H is close to near about minus 24.4 kilojoules per mole. Okay. Then what they do, they will take this structure, this diethyl ethyl structure, so I write it in short form, sorry this will be, uh, I mean it is not a reversible, the earlier one is reversible, this will be a direct irreversible reaction, you form ethene and water. So some of these two you can see it is again it is endothermic in nature, so it will require heat. One of the issues is uh, if these degrade, if the alcohol may also decompose, so that is you should take care. So usually the effective temperature control is required, it may decompose to acetaldehyde. 
this is one of the byproduct which you should avoid and hydrogen source. So, this delta H is also close to uh, 68, this is endothermic reaction 68.5 kilojoules per mole. So, you should prevent this, you should follow this. So, how to prevent it? See at low temperature ethanol conversion is efficient. So, you increase the temperature because it is an endothermic reaction. So, that the dilithyl, because dilithyl ether creation will increase or the composition will increase, but at too high a temperature then this will take over. So, acetaldehyde and excessive amounts of breakdown byproducts such as coke may be formed. So, they are uh, that is why they can use you can either use an adiabatic reactor or you can use an isothermal reactor. So, in the adiabatic reactor you use a fixed or fluidized bed reactor the reaction is conducted in vapor phase over solid acid catalyst. But for isothermal operation multitubular reactors with a catalyst in the tubes and a circulating hot fluid in the shell are utilized. So, isothermal means you take away the heat of the reaction. How do you take out the heat of the reaction? We have already discussed in the previous modules. You send some fluid, it may be a inert hydrocarbon, it may be some water. So, you generate either heat, either you generate steam or you heat up the polar, take away the heat, again send it back to the tubes. So, it can cool down the reaction. So, it could be a almost a isothermal reaction. In the case of adiabatic what you do is the external energy heat which is applied by preheated steam. So, you add preheated steam with the feed and then make it enter the reactor. So, uh, usually you have these three fixed beds with ethanol addition between reactors and the interstage furnace are employed to reheat the mixture. So, this is the different manner by which they produce ethanol. You can also produce, so it means you can pr produce in both ways, you can produce by the adiabatic manner and the isothermal manner. If I compare at both adiabatic and isothermal operation, what properties are changing? So, I can compare them if I write down in the times of adiabatic or isothermal, see the temperature of operation, the temperature which is in Kelvin or you can also change uh, the time between the catalyst, you have, you have to regenerate the catalyst time for catalyst regeneration, conversion percent that is among other important in percent. So, this is the time means how much the catalyst is active and finally, what is the selectivity of ethene, how much of ethene is forming from ethanol, selectivity in percent. So, adiabatic is around 720 to 770 because you are entering steam with it while in the case of isothermal it is less because you are taking away the heat. So, in the time uh, required is around 6 to 12 months for the adiabatic type of operation where this is lesser 1 to 6 months. Conversion is higher in adiabatic is close to 99 percent, but this is around uh, 95 percent near about. Selectivity is also very high it is around 97 to 99 percent of selectivity while this is a bit lower, but still it is quite in order with 95 to 99 percent. So, these are the various factors you should always have a look whenever you are designing a process whether to conduct in adiabatic or a thermal process. Adiabatic means you are supplying heat from outside to maintain delta H to be 0, while in the case of thermal you take away heat by sending uh, either a polar hydrocarbon or an inert hydrocarbon or water boiler feed water. Next, we go to the platform chemical glycerol. So, glycerol can be converted to syngas. So, this is a very simple composition the glycerol. So, you have glycerol here C3H5 OH3. You do a reforming, it means you do in the presence of steam. So, this is a reversible reaction. You form 7 of H2 plus 3 times of carbon dioxide. So, since it is endothermic, so, the delta H will be highly positive, it is close to 129 kilojoule per mole. Okay. This is also called as aqueous phase reforming because if you consider if aqueous phase means because it occurs in the liquid phase. Remember when we talk about reforming, steam reforming, it is never in liquid phase. We saw it in the syngas production from natural gas, it is always in the gas phase. Now, here it is called aqueous phase because it is what in the liquids phase. So, in comparison to steam reforming of ethanol, this method has a number of benefits. So, what are the benefits? Let us see. One benefit of using glycerol in the reforming process is that it can be done at lower temperature. The temperature is reduced, 
because of its increased reactivity. The temperature is just 470 to 550 Kelvin. So, under these conditions, the unwanted reactions are slowed down. So, you do not throw away glycerol basically, that is what we are doing. So, you have to use it for aqueous reforming. Or what you can do, you can combine the reforming process with water gas shift reaction. So, it means that if you have water in it and you have a concentrated aqueous solution of glycerol such as those used in biodiesel manufacturing, they can be converted either into syngas or into hydrogen and its streams. So, either you convert into syngas, you make a mixture of carbon monoxide and hydrogen or you produce only hydrogen. So, you can uh, combine them with the water gas shift reaction. Then the another platform chemicals which comes to place glycerol. Now glycerol uh, we can see what are the components we can get from glycerol. I will outline major one some of them. So you have this glycerol. So uh, essentially what you do is you convert into C3 diols. C3 diols means where you have 3 carbon atoms and 2 hydroxide group OH group. So, C3 diols usually takes place first by dehydration then by hydrogenation. So, first it will lose water and it will form the corresponding ketone. So, it will form a so compound something like this and then you do a hydrogenation, you form the compound like this. So, it is C3 diols, C3 diols means it will have 3 carbon atoms here, One, so 1, 2, 3. 3 carbon atoms. Okay. So, this is called, so uh, in short this is called as propane, gly propane glycol or 1, 2 propane diol or you can also go through that other route, you can also again do her dehydration, you do a dehydration convert into another aldehyde. Now, instead of ketone, this is a ketone, you convert into another aldehyde. So, here you can convert it to this type of compound which is called 3 hydroxy propane aldehyde. So, you have this. Okay. Then again what you do, you add hydrogen and you here you will form 1, 3 propane diol. This is 1, 2 and this is 1, 3. So, you have OH at the ends. Or you can also convert this, you do a dehydration further, you can convert it to acrolene. Acrolene is a essential polymer monomer, it is a monomer for polymerization, this is called acrolene, acrolene. This is one route for glycerol where you do a dehydration followed by hydrogenation to form C3 diols. So, uh, so this is what the uses of this C3 diols are. Okay. So, it can be used for polyester resins for antifreeze component, pharmaceuticals and paint industry. Now, another part is you make the lactic acids. These are monomers which are used for biodegradable polymers such as based on polylactic acid which may be produced nowadays in vast quantities for the cutleries and its other components. The same thing what you do, you again uh, you lose the hydrogen minus H2O, you lose water, sorry not hydrogen, it is water, you form glyceraldehyde. So, glyceraldehyde structure is something like this, you have a compound glyceraldehyde. The glyceraldehyde, you do a isomerization, do a isomerization to form lactic acid. So, lactic acid structure is some okay. disaldehyde, then lactic acid. So, this isomerization is converted on the certain zeolites, ZSM based zeolites. Okay. So, they will convert it to lactic acid or you can also lose another water molecule in this manner. You can then form a dihydroxy acetone. So, you have what you will have is OH group in both sides. And then again do the isomerization and convert it to lactic acid. So, this particular use is very much for the manufacturing of this polymer derived from lactic acid. 
the approach is simple, clean and it is a non-enzymatic substitute for traditional for traditional fermentation. So, it is a non-enzymatic, so you do not use any enzyme here, you use the zeolite for the isomerization and do her dehydration prior to that. So, these are the uses of um, for glycerol and glycerol also again you can also convert to CO plus H2 for syn gas, this is again always available. Okay. And also you can do another same thing you can do, you can do a hydrogenation step followed by a reduction of one molecule of ethanol, you can convert into ethylene glycol. So, this is you must be knowing ethylene glycol. So, EG this is also an important component for paints and varnish industry. Then comes the third platform chemical succinic acid, they are conventionally produced by the hydrogenation of petrochemically derived malic anhydride. Production of the succinic acid by different bacteria. So, if you are produced succinic by different bacteria makes it a promising alternative to malic hydride in biomass derived products. So, succinic acid has a number of promising derivatives. So, if you prepare succinic acid you can prepare further as an intermediate from intermediate you can prepare tetrahydrofuran, you can put it, it is actually gamma butyloacetone or butendiol or pyloric. So, all these are employed as monomers and also the monomers in manufacturing of polymers currently generated from butanes. So, these butyl electron, butendiol are very useful as monomers which are otherwise obtained from butane. So, you have a non-fossil fuel based route in the case of succinic acid. So, again let us see what are the different uh, chemicals you can get out of the succinic acid. So, you have the succinic acid at the center. So, what they do is you can have a what they do they will you have the succinic acid I just want to make this particular compound is OH, you have a double bond here, double bond O here. Now, what you do from this compound you can replace the carbonyl group with a amine group. So, this called this X reaction is called as reactive amination. So, in this reactive amination there are many number of compounds formed, one some of them compound are known as let us say with this compound NH2, so you just change the carbonyl group to NH2 group in that carbonyl group this amine is attached. So, this is called succinomide. Like that various compounds are possible or you may have a diaminobutane. So, you have NH2 both sides NH2, diaminobutane or you can have succinonitrile. So, here you will have a triple bond at the end. So, then uh, you will have or you can also have a compound cut as 2 pyrrolidine, it is a 5 membered ring structure. You have the N here, you have a hydrogen here and you have oxygen here. So, 2 pyrrolidine this is succinonitrile and this can be called as 1,4 diaminobutane, 1,4 and this process is called as reactive amination or reductive amination, reductive amination. Okay. Or you can also do uh, some dehydrogenation, you can write, you can or cyclization uh, to form malic anhydride, this is the root of forming the malic anhydride. You do a hydrolysis. you form malic acid. So, this ring is broken in this hydrolysis, you have O here. So, this is malic acid, this is malic anhydride or you can uh, further do a isomerization just rearranging the structure 
you form fumaric acid. From fumaric acid, this is fumaric acid. So these are. So this is malic acid. This is malic anhydride. Okay. Then uh, you do a hydrogenation on succinic acid. You can get butane diol, OH. or you can have tetrahydrofuran, these are the compounds, it is called THF or you can have gamma butyrolactone this is oxygen. Okay. So, these are the different compounds you get from by addition of hydrogen. So, that is why the succinic acid is a platform chemical. So, succinic acid, but the problem with succinic acid is a substantial recovery and purifying cost which are major obstacles to its practical usage. It is essential for the efficiency of the process so that the byproducts, byproducts are formed in the process synthesis of succinic acid which are acetic acid, formic acid and lactic acid. So, these needs to be separated out before it can be used. The purification techniques of succinic acid have been reported using electrodialysis precipitation and extraction. Significant effort is put into the genetic engineering. So, what they do? They will prepare different types of enzymes or bacteria, then they will do a process optimization with the goal of reducing byproduct generation. So, the use of succinic acid as a precursor for subsequent conversion. So, one way to get rid of this purification problem is you complete whatever want to convert whatever you want to convert means from succinic acid whichever chemical you want to convert in situ in the fermentation mixture itself rather than requiring the recovery of succinic acid. So, instead of trying to recover the succinic acid by the viral process optimization, if we can do a in situ conversion of succinic acid to the desired product that will be a more economically beneficial. Then the last part which is the HMF that is hydroxymethyl furfural. So, biomass hexose because hexose sugars are those which are 6 membered rings those which are found in cellulose, hemicellulose and starches can be dehydrated to produce furan compounds like hydroxymethyl furfural. This is commonly done with a mineral acid. So, catalyst you require a catalyst such as mineral acid which is HCl or sulfuric acid that are dissolved in water. The only issue is this HMF is unstable in acidic condition. So, using these acids presents a number of drawbacks. What are the drawbacks? You want to recover the acid. First is acid recovery. Then uh, you need a costly reactor so that the components become resistant to corrosion and then there is a creation of significant number of byproducts. What are those byproducts? I will let you know. So, because of these challenges, there has been consistent effort to replace this HMF process by a more suitable process so that the catalyst can be recovered and the HMF is actually known to be not much stable in the acidic media. So, uh, rather than to produce HMF, can we produce a derivative of HMF? Is it possible and that is stable in acidic condition? That is where entire research and development is focused on. So, studies are currently focusing on the use of solid acids because it is simple to separate and set cycle. So, one way is you use solid acid because they are simple to separate and recycle. It permits higher reaction temperature, which reduces the reaction time and the number of decomposition byproducts. Then they have properties that can be tuned to improve the HMF selectivity. So, HMF has great potential as a source of monomers that can replace oil based ones in the industrial synthesis of polymers such as polyester, polyamides and polyurethane. So, HMF as a source of monomer is well known. So, this platform chemical continuing, so this compound this furan dicarboxylic acid is a well known example of a compound with a chemical structure. This furan this FDCA can be easily be prepared from a one step process if you oxidize HMF. So, this component is very similar to terephthalic acid. The terephthalic acid is as you know it is derived from a oil refinery. So, if I have a similar compound in FDCA, can I then uh, do a similar polymer like PET? So, there are thus two routes for this. One is a petrochemical route. Petrochemical route means what we do? We have terephthalic acid and we condense it with ethylene glycol and it results in PET. 
polyethylene terephthalate which you all must be knowing all the bottles what you have in the market, the PET bottles. Another is the biomass route, instead of TPA we use FDCA with ethylene glycol condensate it will result in the formation of polyethene furanoate. This PEF bottle is now replacing this PET bottles. This PEF is derived from non-fossil fuel. So, this ethene glycol can be made. Now, the another part is ethene glycol. You have to make the entire process to be sustainable or it is coming from a biomass. So, ethene glycol you know I just now discussed in the succinic acid and so you can uh, convert it sorry not succinic acid from glycerol. You can easily manufacture ethylene glycol from glycerol or it can be also manufactured from ethanol via ethene and ethene oxide. Okay. Then uh, because we know that at room temperature this HMF can easily be converted to FDCA, it is a favorable reaction, but there are some issues in it. So, now I will just discuss what are the issues. Primary issue is they are not at all stable HMF in the acidic media. So, have this type of reaction is not at all possible because HMF will degrade into products which you know these compounds which are known as humans. If they will usually degrade into products like humans because you have presence of catalyst like acid also. So, that is the biggest challenge. So, what is that challenge? So, hexchromate HMF challenge. Now, let us first see before we go to this, suppose we have biomass. Okay. So, what you do with the biomass? You will biomass such as, as suppose we are having this corn starch or corn. So, what you do? You convert into starch, you hydrolyze it through enzymes and you convert into fructose. Then you do a dehydration or do fermentation whatever you want to go ahead and then produce the desired product such as ethanol. But here we are considering on HMF. So, the, what are the route is because the earlier pretreatment method I am not showing that is how the starch corn is converted to starch. It is a wet milling approach where you separate the kernel protein with acid such as sulphur dioxide and water mixture and you separate out you get a corn starch syrup. This corn starch syrup primarily contains fructose. So, if I convert with if I want to see with fructose what happens is uh, fructose will have a structure something like this. So, you have fructose structure let me show you what happens in the reaction mechanism. So, I am um, not doing the three dimensional imaging because this is fructose which you get from the biomass fine. So, the conventionally what they do is they will uh, do a dehydration. So, you have a dehydration reaction. So, you lose 3 molecules of water you produce HMF. So, HMF is something like this. Okay. Now, problem is as soon as you generate this HMF because of the acidic media it will it immediately decomposes to levulinic acid and or the levulinic acid ester. So, it will decompose to this type of compound. It will add up easily two molecules of water again not at all stable. So, then it will form the levulinic acid. So, levulinic acid is given. this is levulinic acid LA and it can also form the formic acid ah, HCOH formic acid. So, you cannot keep with this HMF it is not possible and this levulinic acid further it may decompose in some compounds such as uh, this it can add an alkyl group at this end. So, this is called the uh, RL that is you have this oxygen and uh, what happens is this O this H will replace with the alkyl group R okay. and then the other structure is as it is. Okay. So, this uh, also takes place. So, ultimately you are getting uh, if you uh, you are getting many uh, other because if it is ethanol is present here it will add up the alcohols in ROH and the R group will get attached. So, 
Now what they did, some of the companies, what they are trying is, can we convert this HMF before it goes and decomposes to uh, levulinic acid and formic acid, can we stop the reaction here? So what they thought of is a process where they use methanol plus water mixture. So they used a methanol plus water mixture and they will convert with the help of alcohol, with some alcohol, ROH and water, they will convert it to the HMF but with the ether. Okay, RMF. Okay, so they thought about this part. So, if whether before it decomposes to this, can we think of this type of process? This means this type of process. Okay, this. So, that is where the entire research was focused on because some part is also converted, this fructose, some part is also converted to uh, formaldehyde. And this formaldehyde, uh, then it also gets some part is also converted to xylose, simple sugar. When fine again, it will absorb some molecules of water and will form furfural. And if you keep this for much more time, this fructose will decompose and form humans because you have the mineral acid, it will degrade and form humans. Humans are a very viscous natures of compound. So, uh, most of the work is now trying to see if we can convert into like this type of uh, ether based. So, can we convert into HMF ethers? So, that is where this company came Avantium and they are doing this work where they are converting this HMF to RMF. So, effective pathways for HMF generation are crucial to the development of this technology. Avantium has come up with a new strategy. So, the method sidestep the measure issues which we have just now discussed with the HMF instability by first dehydrating the sugars to generate a stable HMF ether derivative which is then oxidized catalytically to form FDCA and its derivative. Fructose can be converted to furanic at efficiencies between 38 to 47 percent. Now, if we are able to do this, what advantage it will have? See, around 15 million metric tons of PET bottles are produced worldwide. The complete bottle substitution of PEF for PET. So, we will be able to reduce these much of energy, 440 and 520 petajoule of non-renewable energy we can save. And it also reduce greenhouse gas emission by 20 to 35 metric ton of CO2 equivalents. So, this is the usage. So, because the problem is almost 5 percent of all the plastics, I would say 6 percent is PET bottles. So, 6 percent is the PET bottles. If we can reduce, it is a significant reduction. See, 20 to 25, 35 metric tons of CO2 per equivalent. So, what is the system? How does this Aventium process works? So, these are the several steps. So, you have the, you produce the corn starch in the corn wet milling process. So, what they do in the corn starch is, what they will do, you will take, they cut the corn, then they will add, uh, you know, aqueous medium of SO2 plus water. They will separate out the protein kernel fiber or then uh, you have this. So, when you have this SO2, they do this process called as steeping. So, it will separate these protein fibers and the corn starch. Okay. So, steeping actually separates the oil part. So, this is the initial pretreatment. Then what they will do? They will convert the corn starch to fructose and high fructose corn syrup. So, fructose and high fructose around 40 percent, near about 40 percent is fructose and the remaining is uh, dextrose. So, this then what they will do? They will take this mixture and convert this fructose and high fructose corn syrup into furanic. Furanic means this compounds FDCA. Then what you do is recover and upgrade because along with furanic there are many other compounds. So, you need to separate other compounds. Other compounds are like methyl formate, they may be forming or this levulinic acid esters. 
this needs to be separated. Then finally, what you do when you get this HMF or this HMF ethers, they directly convert to FDCA by oxidation. And then they do a polycondensation with this FDCA with ethane glycol to form polyurethane PEF. So, this is the actual process which they follow. So, let us see what is that process here all about. So, you have the uh, here you I will make the block diagrams. So, what is the block diagram? So, if I want to say you add up atmospheric carbon dioxide, if I start from the basic like I start from the biomass plant itself, you do a corn cultivation. So, what does corn cultivation need? It requires sunlight, it will also require fertilizers, okay. So, you require sunlight, you require fertilizers, okay. So, then uh, you convert to corn. This corn is sent to corn wet milling, corn wet milling. Corn wet milling just now I told you is a steeping process, you just convert it into a syrup, syrup means it is forming a mixture of dextrose and fructose. So, I will write here dextrose and fructose, okay. Then what you do is this, uh, you apply energy and convert into HFCS and fructose. So, first dextrose are formed from corn wet milling, then you convert into FFCS plus fructose. So, fructose I can say almost 40 percent by weight, okay. So, this is your feed to the reactor. So, this is sent to the now this particular FSCS high fructose corn sugar and fructose. So, solid part is around 30 percent remaining is a liquid part. This is then sent to a furanic conversion unit. So, I will send it here to a furanics conversion. Here watch the process methodology takes place. You have the catalyst here coming here and the fresh solvent. So, what is fresh solvent? It is water plus methanol. What is the catalyst? It is acidic catalyst. So, in this furanic conversion unit, this is the heart of the process, okay. So, what you have is you will form two things. You will have uh, the a humine product because ultimately it is acid. So, there will be some formation of humine also, the insoluble part and the soluble part which is the liquid part which you actually separate out. So, you go to a furanic upgradation unit here. Furanic upgradation. So, what you do is you send out all the levulinic acid or the levulinic acid ethers, okay. So, you do a recycle, you do the solvent because you need to again recycle the solvent solvent recycling is required. You do a solvent recycling. Now, once you do the solvent recycling, so what you have is, so you have HMF and ethers of HMF as the product. Coming out and uh, remaining humans You send it to a CHP unit. What is this CHP unit? Is a CHP is a combined heat and power. So you generate energy out of it. But with this energy, you will also have some CO2 emission, which I'm not writing. That is also you should take care. So humans are of no use, but they can be burnt. So they are taken out. Now this HMF ethers, and then they are sent to this HMF for the oxidation. So, what do you require for oxidation? You require acetic acid catalyst and air, acetic acid plus catalyst plus air, okay. So, what you will have is FDCA coming out, FDCA. Then uh, you have 
polymerization unit. So, you form PEF. So, you add here ethylene glycol. Okay. So, this is your final product. So, this is where you the get the final PEF as the polymer. Now, so you see what if we started from this corn cultivation, then corn wet milling converting to dextrose, then enzymatic process convert to high fructose corn syrup plus fructose, send it to a converter reactor, we recycle the solvent, then upgradation we separate those esters of HMF and levonic acid, oxidize it, finally do a condensation to get polymer. This is the entire Aventium process which has been commercially now available. Let us see the heart of the process is the furanic conversion unit. So, we will see and the furanic upgradation unit. So, conversion is just simpler reactor, but upgradation is very important. We should see what how does the aggregation look like. So, there are 8 distillation columns. Pressure is gradually reduced in order to simplify the recovery of lightened products such as methanol, methyl formate and formaldehyde. So, in the there are total 8 out of which initial distillation columns separate this methanol methyl formate. So, the first 5 distillation columns are dedicated to the light end recovery and operate between 25 to 1 bar. The final distillation columns of the recovery are used for the upgradation sections. They are dedicated to the recovery and upgradation of HMF and HMF ethers, LA and LA esters and operate between vacuum in vacuum condition, but at elevated temperature. Finally, what you do is you neutralize the sulfuric acid catalyst used in the furanic conversion. Otherwise, it will provide, it will degrade the un product into unwanted humin. So, you have to neutralize the sulfuric acid catalyst. So, this is the way how it goes about is in this manner. So, let us say you have the furanics, solvent and humins all coming from the furanic conversion reactor. Furanics, then you have the solvent, and the humins. So, if the first column, in the first column, this is column number 1, so it goes in column number 2, so you will have 3 columns here, column number, so let us, I will, what they have did in their flow sheet, they have mentioned is 3 and 4, so here you have take out the methanol and water then you take out methanol further from here and then in the upper part you also have the methanol and the methyl for formate methyl formate mf so these are the products so what you do is this methanol they uh, can uh, then let us focus on the second part what they do the heavier end you send it to another column this is column number 2 again you generate methanol and water then goes to the fifth column column number 5 you get MeOH H2O and now you will get furfural here and then you send it to sixth column column number 6 you will get so what you do is you further process it in two different stages so, let us suppose this is the 8th stage and let us suppose this is the 7th stage. So, this is the 7th column. So, again you have H2O and furfural. Then you have the esters. Now, here you are removing all the lact the levulinic acid esters at this point, the bottom product. And uh, here this is the desired product which is the HMF are the HMF ethers and you have the remaining humans which are the in insoluble part coming out here. Okay. So, what you do is in this case you send it to this, you mix all this, you mix all this and send it. So, this is called the methanol pool MeOH pool. So, it can be recycled. 
So this methanol is the solvent, it can be recycled. So you see here 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 8. So these 3 are operated at 25 to 1 bar and the below 2, 5, 6, 7 and 8 columns are operated between 0 0.2 to 0 0.015 bar. So this is your desired product HMF, okay. These are all our undesired products. So this is further taken and form FDCA and this FDCA is finally produced MEF with the addition of ethylene glycol. This is the entire process for Aventium. So this is the reaction what happens actually. So HMF reacts with half O2 to form FDCA plus water and this the alkyl based the ether based HMF requires again 3 by 2. It forms again FDCA plus alcohol ROH. These are the oxidation reactions. The polymerization reaction is obviously it is FDCA, n moles of FDCA contains with n moles of ethylene glycol and it forms PEF plus 2N minus 1 H2O. So these are the oxidation reactors and these are the main primary polymerization reactor. So now if you see the structures, see the paraxylene structure is something like this, paraxylene. Now we see the raw materials from oil based and one from biomass based. Then this is polyterephthalic acid, purified terephthalic acid. So this is PTA and finally the PET structure is something like this from conventional manner it is made. So there is the PET, one monomer of PET. Same thing we can do for HMF also. So HMF structure I have already made, it is a OH group, then a 5 membered ring. This is HMF, and then this is FDCA. This is FDCA and then you have the polymer structure, very similar. The double bond here. Okay. So here you have the polymeric chain N. Here again you have the polymeric chain N. So now you see this is PEF. So there is very similar approach. So paraxylene, PTA, PET through the oil based route, HMF, FDCA, PEF to the biomass route. So that is why this PEF can an alternative to PET. Why I drew this structure is to say that the final structures except for this is PEF, it is a 5 membered ring. Wait, this is making sense. It is a 5 membered ring, this is a 6 membered ring, otherwise the properties of both the polymers are very similar. So finally, uh, we have HMF, what are the other uses for HMF, this is the final concluding slide, this is the what are the final other uses of HMF, it can be used through, uh, it can also be converted to alkenes, you have dimethyl furan.
So, this, we have seen this part FDCA and FDCA can be we have already seen this part. Now, this HDF if you do a CC coupling if on H HMF if you do a CC coupling and condensation CC coupling plus condensation. I am not showing the intermediate steps, you can form alkanes. Same thing, you can also form alkane through the other route that is the aldol adduct. You will again form the alkanes. So, it is a us very useful source for the generation of alkanes as well. So, we have seen this part in detail it can produce dimethyl furane and others you can also produce alkanes here. So, this aldol duct adduct is common for both of them and this CC coupling and condensation is common for the production of different alkanes. Okay. So, these are the different uses uh, for the HMF other than just now we discussed. So, I will conclude here. So, I will suggest you go through the textbook and then also visit this particular website the Aventium process flow sheet where the entire article is given. You can see the PEF process, the energy optimization and how the energy is taken care of, the other process streams they have also modeled in, in a commercial package called as Aspen. Thank you.